Hello and welcome everyone to our webinar, Reaching New Heights in the Canadian Public Sector, Introducing Oracle's Planning and Budgeting Cloud Service. Before we get started, I would like to go over a couple housekeeping items. You will be on mute throughout the presentation. If you'd like to ask a question, please type it into the question box in the control panel. And then once the presentation is concluded, we will read the questions back and respond. We are recording this session and it will be available on the AST YouTube channel next week. So my name is Patrick Callahan. I'm a VP of EPM and BI here at AST. I will be acting as your host for today's session. I'm pleased to have with me today, Mike Harrison, Regional Vice President of Public Sector Applications at Oracle Canada and Abhi Reina, one of our EPM practice leaders at AST. Uh, later on, you'll be hearing from our special guests, James Consala, Jose Fernandez, and Andrea Harper from the customer Greater Orlando Aviation Authority, offering their experiences with the Oracle Planning and Budgeting Cloud Service. So AST has been in business for 21 years. We are an Oracle Platinum partner and one of only a dozen Oracle Cloud Premier partners globally. We've won five Oracle Excellence Awards, in recent years, with the last two, including Oracle planning and budgeting implementations. We are headquartered in the United States with services globally and offices in Canada. Our services span 12 industries, but our focus since the beginning has been the public sector with over 60% of our business in that area. We have 25 Oracle specializations covering each of Oracle's pillars. And you'll notice those in the middle for EPM and BI that relate to this solution and our EPM practice. We are very proud of our workplace awards represented by our employees long average tenure. In the North American public sector, AST is known for firsts in the cloud. The first to deploy Oracle PBCS, the first to deploy Oracle Cloud ERP and financials, and the first to deploy Oracle Cloud HCM. As you can see, we have a short but jam-packed agenda for you today, but our goal is to show you this proven solution, Oracle PBCS, and how it can benefit yourselves and how it's benefited our public sector customers. So without further ado, I want to introduce Mike Harrison, Oracle Canada's Regional Vice President of ERP and EPM, to share his perspective of today's enterprise planning challenges in the Canadian public sector. Thank you, Patrick, and good afternoon, everyone. As Patrick said, I am Mike Harrison. I'm the Regional Vice President for Oracle Applications for Public Sector Canada. I've been with Oracle for about six and a half years, and I'm pleased to be with you today. I'm going to spend the next five minutes giving you a brief overview of what we're seeing in the public sector and then what is driving the critical need in enterprise planning management system. As we all know, the global economy that we operate is in constant change and continues to create new pressures on our public institutions. Pressures are the drivers for change, and they can be lumped into three categories as shown on the chart. But these categories are drivers that include demands for citizen awareness and access to information on government program spending, the changing demographics which affect the Canadian workforce and having a particularly large impact in public sector. The budgetary constraints which exist in a low growth economic environment where both the federal and most of the provincial governments are running large deficits. The requirement for accountability and transparency. The need for improved service delivery, an example of which would be reduced health um, healthcare wait times. And the competition for investment dollars, whether it is the project prioritization with the ministries or the ability to attract the best talent in public sector roles. This chart illustrates the greatest challenges in planning faced by finance managers across North America. And not unexpectedly, the biggest challenge is the reliance on spreadsheets. A recent Oracle survey showed that finance managers heavily use spreadsheets for the planning process. And while spreadsheets are easy to use and expertise is abundant, they're not well suited for enterprise-wide processes such as planning. Without a common and central repository for these spreadsheets, there will always be a challenge in reconciling them. This reconciliation issue introduces errors in the planning process. Many times the same numbers mismatch from one spreadsheet to another and mismatch spreadsheets even between departments. As a result, too much time is spent gathering and maintaining the information 
leaving too little time to fully analyze it and getting the value from the data. The results in poor optimization of time and resources. So, not only do we have poor use of time and resources, we also have a large challenge in providing accurate planning and forecasting. A further research study shows that in today's unsearching global economy, accurate planning and forecasting has become a very challenging process. In fact, as shown on the chart, research revealed that 40% of CFOs can only accurately forecast one quarter into the future, and only 12% can only forecast one month into the future. That's not good news, and we surely need a better tool to forecast accurately. Something that can essentially hold all the planning information, provide us the analytical capability to actually do our projections. This chart summarizes the key challenges that exist today in enterprise planning. A lack of centralized systems, siloed departmental systems, business logic that's held by only a few key people, and difficulty in creating enterprise reporting. Enterprise performance management solutions that can help you address these issues is critical. Public bodies need to act and behave differently from the past, they need to be equipped with the internal management capabilities of channel resources effectively and efficiently towards accomplishing each organization's vision. It usually starts with implementing the integrated planning reporting process and then prioritizing the organization's project, performance, risks, partnerships, assets, and even human capital. At the end of the day, it's all about delivering services to achieve your outcome, and it is extremely challenging to deliver this without the alignment and the enterprise performance management solution can deliver. We believe that the best product in the market to allow customers to meet this need today is Oracle's planning by June Cloud Service. And on that note, Patrick, I'll turn it back to you to uh, take our take our audience through Oracle's planning and budget cloud server. Thank you, Mike. Um, so before we get to the demo, I wanted to spend a few minutes just providing a little bit of background on the Oracle planning and budgeting cloud service. So really, the question is multifaceted. How do you achieve insight? What economic factors impact your budget? How will you how will your projected retirements impact your cost? How can you help citizens understand your priorities? And how can you develop a budget that addresses those concerns? Overall, what factors impact the long range projections? And how can I do this faster and more streamlined? So Oracle has been a leader in planning and budgeting for many years. In Gartner's Magic Quadrant for over a dozen years, and with hundreds of developers in its R&D group, further enhancing it with each release. Oracle's planning and budgeting cloud service was released just over three years ago, and it's been highly successful with over 2,300 subscriptions and over 120,000 end users. Oracle's cloud is enterprise grade, flexible and modern, and the planning and budgeting solution is a centerpiece. So this Oracle planning and budgeting cloud service is founded on Hyperion planning a world-class solution for many years. It's proven and scalable, and it includes powerful analytical and what-if capabilities. Its subscription-based model requires no capital investment and minimal IT involvement ongoing. The interface is truly user-friendly. It's intuitive and role-based and accessible on mobile and tablet devices. The navigation flows are based on usage, and the Microsoft Office integration is both familiar and very powerful. The key difference of using a solution like Oracle's planning and budgeting cloud service versus spreadsheets or manual efforts is the inherent process and workflow features. It is flexible, collaborative, and unifying, allowing users to provide comment commentary and detail about the numbers, doing it concurrently with your data centralized, and safely maintained. Also, the integration with Oracle PBCS is simplified by bringing data in from other Oracle Cloud applications or on-premise applications like PeopleSoft, Oracle eBusiness, and your other business systems, or simply by importing data from spreadsheets or flat files. It's really all made easy. These are the built-in tools to help with data mapping, file transfers, and to fully automate the solution as well. So the best part of the cloud solution is the feedback we've seen from our customers and the feedback Oracle has seen 
uh, from all customers on their experiences with PBCS. So across the board, the customers are seeing improved scalability, performance, functionality, and shorter time to implement. I also want to introduce AST's OpEx planning. So based on our many years of implementing uh, implementation experience in the EPM space and working with many public sector customers in Hyperion and PBCS, AST has been able to create a prepackaged solution for its cloud offering, and we call it OpEx planning. OpEx includes a pre-built and configured, pre-configured planning application. Out of the box, there are multiple drivers, projection methodologies, web forms, reports, all available for a fast track implementation of operational planning, along with the position and capital budgeting capabilities. In fact, Abi will be just demonstrating PPCS with AST's OpEx planning. So the Oracle PBCS and AST OPEX solution meets the many needs of Canadian public sector. Aside from operating in capital budgets, as well as position or human capital planning, a service-based model is easy to employ. We've seen this as a common requirement in Canada. Moreover, the solution applies to more than the government. It applies to universities, public utilities, transportation agencies, and AST has experience with all of these. So here is Abi Reyna an EPM practice director at AST and co-architect of our OPEX planning solution. He'll provide a brief demonstration. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, all right, let me get started. First of all, thanks uh, to everyone for joining this uh, webinar. Um, so once you log in into uh, the PBCS application, you will land onto this uh, user-friendly interface that Oracle calls a simplified interface. Uh, this is a modern interface with the latest template-like uh, look and feel. You can access the application from um, both computer and mobile devices via a simple browser. Uh, and, and these icons are called here uh, uh, cards or play cards or menus. You can directly access different application functions via these cards. And uh, the level of access to the functionality is uh, restricted by the role that you're, you're assigned to. And currently I'm logged in as a as an admin, so I have full access. Um, different icons here, um, data for uh, for entering uh, and access to all the data forms, report, access to all the other reports in the system that you can, yeah, and you can run PDF or, or, or Excel or uh, plain estimate format, uh, different business rules that would be configured into the system, different calculations, uh, approval if you have uh, a workflow defined into the system, you can access that directly from here. Uh, application as an admin, I have access to uh, different uh, functionality that uh, one can uh, use for managing an application uh, as a user, as an admin, access to different tools uh, like for security, for changing the appearance of the system, uh, making some public uh, announcements to all the users and stuff like that. Um, at one single interface, uh, you have access to this. Academy is another interesting one where uh, you can uh, you can have an access to the latest and the greatest documentation by Oracle for, uh, for this particular product. Uh, latest updates which are happening, you can have access to that, what is happening. And there is also a video there. So um, you no longer have to really go back and do a Google. Uh, within the application, the user can access the latest and the greatest documentation. And uh, again, coming back here, the task list. Uh, this again is, uh, is, is the most critical one. Uh, for a user, that's what the user gets in. Uh, these are um, the guided navigation uh, of your business process. Uh, this is the entry point for a department user. This is where you have the ability to map your uh, organization budget process into the system. Uh, you know, such as uh, you can view instructions, um, you can enter data through the data forms, you can run calculations, you can view reports. Uh, and let me get into uh, one uh, particular task. This is all OPEX predefined task list. And uh, at the administrator level, you have the ability to define uh, these planning tasks and assign them to different users um, and set different dates here, um, the due dates, and uh, you can set up an alert. The planner will automatically get a notification when their task is due. And at a user level, um, you will see uh, your own task. 
when uh, what the status of that task is. Like here, it also provides you a, a kind of a graphical interface of uh, the status of overall task here. Um, again, um, as I said, instructions you can have. Um, you can put instruction within within system. Um, you can change every year. It can be a Word document or it can be an attachment, any kind of attachment. It can be an HTML uh, link to a page. Um, it, right. So that's where you know you can map your business process system. Let me jump on to a data form here. Um, a typical data form will uh, look like like this. This is uh, OpEx pre-built, uh, pre-configured data form, but it is highly configurable. You can change it. And the top part here is uh, uh, called the page view. Uh, this again will be mapped based on your source system, financial system, based on your chart of account segments. All these elements would be uh, uh, mapped here. Um, cost center, fund, um, stuff like that. And uh, once uh, user logs in, user will be able to see only the data that user has access to. It's all security driven. Uh, different columns here, uh, you know, right now, prior year actual and prior year budget years. Uh, this is again configuring. You can add more, more, more years if you want, but this is to give you a trend analysis. Um, Historic uh, uh, proposed budget year. Uh, for next year, but you can add uh, biannual another year as well. This is again uh, based on how you want to define uh, different uh, account stru structure here, your, your object accounts, again coming and flowing in from your source uh, financial system. So user can directly enter the number here, or uh, uh, user can as well use different features, like um, do the adjustment to uh, uh, to do the data, um, enter the comments, just like in Excel, enter supporting details, giving a breakdown of uh, that particular account element. I can also see the history or, or the audit trail of that particular cell, who changed and when, and that's a very critical, important uh, feature. Uh, attach a, a document, any sort of document, Excel, PDF, um, Word, or anything to uh, this particular cell. Um, and, and these are some of the very basic which uh, one would be using on a regular basis. There's also um, a lot of uh, OPEX planning. We have provided a comment in case you want to enter and come and see the comments up front. Um, that also is available within the planning application. Another important feature is uh, is, is using uh, uh, Excel directly. Uh, there's a feature or functionality called Smart View application where it allows uh, a user to directly use the same application via Excel. So all user has to do is get into uh, the action and, and click on a particular feature called uh, Open in Smart View. Once you do that, automatically the application will open up uh, here in Excel. And Traditionally, people are used to working on Excel and, and all the features and the functionality which was available on the web is available here. Like, as I said, comments and supporting detail, um, adding an attachment, seeing the history or audit trail, all adjustments as well. Everything is available through Excel. So you can very well enter your complete budgeting here in the Excel itself. So let me move on uh, to some of the features here. Uh, I talked about uh, uh, service uh, improvement. Many times there are one-off requests on top of the budget that also can be handled um, here in, in the OPEX planning. Like for example, if, um, if a department um, emergency medical services division is looking for a new ambulance and within that, um, you know, some additional staff the system has ability to um, request that, uh, and, uh, and 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 it, it, this is something typically that occurs on a regular basis within the budget process. And you can go back and enter at an account level what all details um, you know are required within that, and and all these details uh, which you enter here are are visible within the the core data form. If I jump back here to the operating expense, 
you should be able to see those additional details that have been asked as all request. So at one screen, you can see the regular budget process as well as any additional uh, one-off request within the system. And uh, the system also provides uh, similar functionality for, for uh, revenues, uh, entering and managing revenue uh, and capital as well. But let me, with the interest of time, let me jump on to another core functionality, which is position-based budgeting. Now, getting to this screen, once you um, when, once we define and 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 uh, source the PBCS application with the source um, HLM system, once that data is pulled into the system, all these default forms will be pre-populated. Uh, let me get into one of the one of the application one of the form here, and let me choose quickly one particular grade element that I know has some data. Once I get into this, um, I see that these are the grades which I have pulled from the source system, uh, source HLM system. Uh, in this case, we have grades and steps. I can go back and uh, modify these steps if I want and apply them all across um, to synchronize these select elements to all the positions that have this particular step. So I don't have to go back to each position, but rather I can modify that at uh, this level and see the budget impact directly. I can also go back and uh, see my all the uh, benefits element which are coming up from the source system, right? Uh, like different uh, life insurance or more details. Again, it is all driven by what is being defined in, um, in, in, the, in, in your HRM, HR system. Um, different, uh, you know, plans, uh, pension plans, and uh, these different uh, numbers, you can directly go back and change them here and, and then apply directly to uh, all the users that have them. Again, one central place, one central place you can manage. It. You can also go back to position level and change them. That I'll, I'll show you quickly later but you can also apply at this level itself. You can also, um, go back and change your cost of living adjustment, which is also called uh, consumer price index, uh, and also other salary element details uh, you can have a global changes to these. You can have uh, very specific for a particular cost center, or you can have globally at these changes. All that through uh, uh, the business rules that will be applied on this. And uh, as I said, once this is uh, at a position level done, you can go back and, and calculate total compensation across all the department. And uh, in the end, that what would be pushed to the line item because that's the key. Um, important feature that once you calculate on the position and uh, position, um, uh, you know, compensation details and benefit details, you want to push it to the line item level so that it hits the right bucket at the GL level. Um, the key screen also, uh, what users will have an access to is a position master screen uh, where they can see uh, based on their access, their department users, uh, sorry, positions and um, and uh, they can manage different attributes of that position. Uh, if they want, they can add or delete positions. They can add um, multiple positions, they can add more than one position at the same time. Um, they can also go back and uh, add a position individual level, and they can change their position grades uh, numbers directly. And there are uh, different business rules associated with them. Uh, you can add new grades, you can um, transition from one step to another step, and you can synchronize, that means it's gonna auto-calculate the numbers um, directly. You can, different benefits as all coming from your source system, you can go back and uh, modify them at individual position level, and uh, and this will be all applied once calculated to, uh, the, the, to the right bucket at the GL level. 
distribution is very important the allocations which you call at a GL level each position can have uh, multiple allocation you can define a number of allocations or distribution for a position uh, through this screen so uh, once um, all that is calculated or input uh, this will be calculated and pushed to uh, to the line item as I said to the light bucket so this is at a, at a very quick high level um, you know position budgeting now let me um, take you to a report uh, how report or budget books are can be managed or uh, created uh, this explore repository once you land here again this is all driven by what the user have access to what folder within the the folder structure of the reporting structure so let me get into this particular folder that I have access to I can see um, a Canadian budget book sample I just created a sample you can go back and edit that uh, Within this particular sample, you can see I have a, a PDF, I have a report, and I also have a Word document here. So I can put all these together and bundle them together as one document. So let me go back and run this particular budget book in one complete book format. And these are all reports parameter. Um, I have only one report for this example, but you can have a number of reports within this. Uh, that typically comprises a, a budget book. So here's the output uh, of, uh, of this particular budget book. I have a table of content where I can go and directly navigate to different sections. Um, I took this as one of the sample um, and uh, I can go back and uh, bundle those different documents together. I can get into my report that uh, I um, had embedded into, the system, into this particular book. Um, I can, um, you know, this is uh, the, the last section. So again, uh, this is, um, as I said, configurable that you can uh, put together different uh, documents or charts and graphs together and make a budget book. And again, this is again a very good feature that I thought I should highlight. All right, so that's that's it from my side. Um, we'll take it uh, back to Patrick now. Thank you. Thanks, Abhi. That was a great example of PBCS for the public sector, um, albeit a, uh, just a, a sliver of, of all the capabilities and features. So next, we're honored to have one of our clients here to present their case study, Oracle's first public sector deployment of planning and budgeting cloud service in North America was for Orlando Airport. So let me hand it off to James Kunsala, Jose Fernandez, and Andrea Harper from our customer, the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, as he stated, uh, my name is James Consala. I'm from the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority. Um, the authority, we actually uh, manage two separate airports. We do the Orlando International Airport as well as the Orlando Executive Airport, which is a smaller airport here in Orlando. Uh, we've got about 680 or so full-time employees. And currently on the OPBCS, we have about 70 active users um, during the budget season and probably five or so throughout the year. Um, as you can just see some traffic statistics that we have there that we put up uh, just so maybe you can make a reference of the size, you know, about 42 million annual passengers. Uh, there's some cargo and other operational information just uh, for you to peruse. Um, and now I'd like to get into the actual process that we went through um, in order to implement this. And I'd like to start out with basically why we went to uh, this new software. Um, one of the main reasons was a lot of what we were doing on our end was a standalone manual process. Um, a lot of spreadsheets, um, different systems, and it got really difficult to bring them all together. Um, another big thing was uh, we had no capital process in the uh, current software that we were using. Um, so what this did is all these things kind of made it very easy to uh, get errors. Um, it was a very lengthy planning cycle. 
because we had to get all these different pieces of information from different systems, different spreadsheets, different people. So we we're looking for something that could bring that all together. Another big issue that we had was uh, there was no end user control. And what we mean by that is our end users, our budgeting department are the main users of this. And if they wanted just a simple change or some kind of control over something, they had to contact IT or a different department to get it set up. This obviously then added to you know, a time for just a simple change, something could take two days where you know, we wanted something to where we can give them the flexibility to make changes on the fly, get things done within a, you know, a couple minutes instead of a couple of days. Um, we didn't have any what if scenarios, no um, flexible modeling, anything that we could do there. So that was uh, another issue. Um, back to the Excel thing, not only did we have these spreadsheets, there was no way to integrate that into the software that we were using. Um, so we were looking for something that we could directly integrate and connect right into the software into uh, you know, an Excel format. Um, obviously, when software gets de-supported, that's a, that's a big issue. So that was another problem that we were having is that the current software we were using uh, was being de-supported. So we definitely needed to look for something. And we wanted better reporting. Uh, the reporting in the other tool was kind of along the same lines. There was no real end user control. It was very difficult to get the information, it took a lot more development and time as opposed to giving end user control and department functional uh, specialist access to be able to create that. So with the uh, help of AST, we were able to put together a project scope that could target our need and resolve a lot of these existing challenges that we had. Um, what went into that with the implementation was the design and build of the EPM cloud application, where we uh, were able to uh, consolidate our line item budgets, basically our budget down to the uh, line item level, so we were able to do that right down to the GL account code. Um, we were able to integrate and uh, support the historical data. It was integration with our Oracle GL um, for both the actuals and the budget balances. And we were able to push back into Oracle the uh, adopted budget once it was entered in the EPM cloud. Um, then Throughout the year, um, we were able to grab historical adopted and amended budgets and actual balances from Oracle GL and push those back in. So basically, the two systems constantly are up to date and have the same information and we can you know, manipulate our data from both sides, Oracle and OPGCS. We had to set up uh, some initial set of reports through the Financial Reporting Studio and also through SmartView. Um, definitely helped us out greatly because of the flexibility that both they have, especially the smart view because you get to use Excel functionality. The enablement of smart view itself for data entry, uh, we've got a lot of people that like to do their work in spreadsheet as opposed to on a computer screen in an application. So this allowed some flexibility there. So we're able to set up a uh, smart view and as I stated earlier, also use that as a ad hoc reporting tool because you can take not only enter data in there, but then you can take that data and manipulate it in an Excel format. And then AST also provided the uh, knowledge transfer um, for both technical and administrative users. Uh, this is both during and after, and we basically have become self-sufficient due to this. So now we've been able to not only use the application, but we can make updates to it, we maintain it, we can create new reports, um, et cetera, based on you know, the implementation and the systems that we have with ASTT. So kind of what I went over in the slide a little bit with the implementation or the solution benefits. Now we got a web-based application before we were on-prem, which for a lot of our users, you know, they don't always have access to approve and enter budgets and stuff like that. So giving us the flexibility of the cloud, meaning they can do it from home, they can do it on the road, et cetera, was a great advantage. 
Um, the integration into Oracle EBS was also another big benefit. It's a lot easier to run and integrate the uh, data to and from Oracle in this system. We've got a lot more flexibility on our what if scenarios. Now we can actually kind of forecast out what could happen, you know, if we enter, you know, this budget, this budget amount, what can you do from there? Um, so it gave us the capability that we didn't have in our previous software. Um, to reiterate the uh, ad hoc analysis that we can do on an Excel basis using SmartView, that was definitely something that we did not have before. And now with that, like I stated, you can not only use Smart view to enter data, but you can also use it to uh, generate reports, export data, send somebody something on the fly right out of the system. It's a really nice uh, feature. And then also the uh, financial reporting tool um, was a big help. Um, as I stated, we are now able to generate our own reports, um, modify the reports, etc. Uh, fairly easy. Budget book was always a huge manual process. I kind of touched on that at the beginning of one of our biggest issues that we're having is that we used to have multiple systems, spreadsheets, et cetera, that we had to all put together. And it was very time consuming because you basically were copy and paste the numbers, manually adding numbers, et cetera, from anything from paper to a spreadsheet to somebody's Word document and trying to jumble this all together, which not only is time consuming, but it's, there's an accuracy uh, problem there, you know, where now we're able to generate it from the actual raw data, which not only saves a lot of time, but gives us confidence in the numbers and that they're correct. So it definitely made life a lot easier. Again, forecasting analysis and then site integration with Microsoft Office. It's not only just Excel that we're able to do this with, there's some other Office tools that you can integrate with it. So, all in all, it was a great experience, a great tool, and AST was a big help. Well, I hope that was beneficial for everybody that was listening, and now I'm going to turn it back over to Patrick. All right, thank you, James, Jose, and Andrea. So I'm um, just gonna wrap things up. Let me summarize our session and then open it up for some questions. So Oracle's Cloud Solutions, especially the planning and budgeting cloud service that we've shown you today provides our customers faster time to value. It truly enables rapid deployment, a simplified interface promotes user adoption, and it allows each of you to keep up with a faster pace of change with superior technology. Abi demonstrated AST's OPEX planning solution for PBCS, which is targeted for public sector customers in provincial and municipal governments, universities, and public transportation and utility organizations. But with PBCS and Oracle's complementary EPM cloud solutions, which are enterprise performance reporting and financial consolidation and close, AST offers quick launch programs to ensure a streamlined implementation, focus scope, and an accelerated time to value. So for planning and budgeting, for narrative and collaborative reports like budget books, uh, financial reports, grants, and your annual financial reports, you can leverage Oracle's great cloud solutions. Okay, so let's open it up for questions. Um, as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, please type it into the question box on your control panel. Let me take a peek. All right, so the first question is, um, how is this licensed? Um, so Oracle PBCS, or Planning and Budgeting Cloud Service, is actually subscription-based. It's not a software license, and that subscription is based by name, uh, by user or a named user. Um, there is a minimum of 10 users for a, a subscription. Uh, we didn't really mention it, but there is um, there's no charge for AST's OPEX planning. Um, it's part of um, AST services when we do implementations. Okay. Um, so next question, is there an extra cost for the Microsoft Office piece? So the Microsoft Office piece is called SmartView. 
Um, it is uh, actually a, an add-in. Um, so it's a very simple download and install in the Microsoft Office. And no, there isn't um, a cost for it. So everything you saw today is part of the base Oracle PBCS uh, subscription. Um, so I have a question, what is the average implementation time for PBCS? Um, so that sort of depends on scope. Um, some of our customers only look at the operating budget. Um, so we'd set that up and set up sort of the needed uh, integrations. Um, others also want position budgeting uh, or capital budgeting. Uh, so depending on scope, it, 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 the range is a little bit uh, broad, but you know, anywhere from three to six months. Um, it could be a little bit more focused. Um, you know, we do sort of recommend a phased rollout um, to get the system into your hands sooner than later so you can see what you like and um, how you want to, which features you'd like to extend. Um, there is another question here. How is security managed and is it uh, native to the module or can it uh, look into an ERP? So um, another good question. Um, all different options here. Um, it does have its own um, security uh, configurations, uh, but it can we, we can work with you to, to conf configure it and, and um, uh, be connected with one of your LDAP uh, servers. Um, Oracle actually has a real nice complementary cloud service called um, the Identity Management uh, Cloud Service. Uh, we've used it for other customers. Um, and it, it essentially applies a single sign-on um, uh, solution uh, to you, uh, to the uh, any of the Oracle um, cloud um, applications like PBCS. Um, I got one more question here so far. What if you already have Hyperion planning? That's a that's a great question. Um, so Hyperion planning applications. There's a lot of folks that have Hyperion planning. Um, they can be migrated into the cloud. Uh, the methods and the efforts sort of depend on what you already have in place. Um, most people, um, the migration of Hyperion planning into the cloud uh, is pretty straightforward. Um, so uh, we'd be happy just because there are different options, different things that contribute to the complexity of that effort. You know, we'd be happy to discuss that uh, with you further. Um, just looking at this one last question that came in. Um, all right, so it looks like it's powerful functionality. Is there a way to simplify the screens and limit the functionality uh, for less experienced users? That is a, a, a perfect question. Um, so, so what Avi did show you, um, a couple of our screens are, are maybe, maybe some of the more um, complex configurations of those screens, but those screens, we would work with you to make them um, at the right level uh, with the amount of uh, the right information and the right level of capabilities for your end users. So common configurations, you know, include just, you know, basic configurations of those data forms, making sure that the security is set up so that users can't see or be confused by extra data. Uh, but those forms can be simplified um, uh, if you need them to be simplified. It, it's really sort of what you're used to from a um, from an implementer from an end user perspective. Uh, but you're correct in that we often see many different user types. Um, some end users ultimately will get one or two forms, maybe you know access to a couple of reports. Your super users will have access to a whole lot more. And then one thing, you know, just to follow up on that is, you know, some of our customers use the Microsoft Office integration and, and do everything through Excel because it is live. You can save and enter data and, and um, you know, contribute to the budget preparation and development activities uh, all through Excel if you needed to. So a lot of different options, but absolutely there's a way to simplify it, but it is role-based. Um, and, and we can make sure that um, the screens and the reports and the task lists are all in line with the end users. Um, I'm gonna take one more question here and, and I, I see another one here is their upload capability. So yes, I did mention that in the webinar about integration. Um, ultimately, uh, there's an upload 
functionality called data management that allows you to map a flat file into the system. And then you can obviously export um, a, a, an adopted budget um, into, uh, but you know, uh, so it could be sent over to your ERP system, financial systems for, for upload um, and consumption there. So the, the, the file integration piece is extremely simple. Um, it can also be, um, it can also be um, automated. Um, and then if the question on upload was around end users uploading data be, with the office integration in SmartView, um, it ends up uh, really being uh, a tackle, tackled uh, that way. Uh, it's extremely user friendly that way. All right. Um, some great questions. We appreciate your uh, participation in the Q&A portion, um, but we do need to wrap up. Um, if you do have additional questions, please reach out. Uh, please reach out to our team. Um, let me just close the my question uh, dialogue page there. Um, so we have Canadian sales directors. Um, so our team up in Canada um, include uh, Tom Kunimoto and Kevin Morris. Um, and then just there's contact information right there. So we do appreciate everybody attending. Thanks again for joining this AST webinar. Have a great day.